Hey there, what's up? Welcome back. Um, today I will be reviewing Tenchi Muyo GXP. You know, that one with the cops. Now nah, I'm fucking with you. Yeah, this is what I'm reviewing. You know, the third installment in the Tenchi Muyo series. I mean, uh, stick around. Hope you enjoy it. And, uh, you know, like it. Comments if you like. You know, doesn't, doesn't matter. You know, you bring me sadness midnight. Midnight, son. You want to get me out of midnight. I'm looking for a dreary love that's wandered far away I close my eyes and try to live for today I really think I love you Oh, but the red moon is watching my every move I reach out my hand to touch your soft face You're so close Yeah, so Tenchi Mio GXP, man, this so far is when I watched this, I was actually so impressed with all the lore that's given. Cause you know how the other two Tenchi series, um, yeah, it was cool. You find out there's life in space, whatever, but not much is given. Now you know there's this Jiraiyan Empire and probably the GP is out there, but in this one they go into death. With the galaxy and shit, you find out more lore and everything, cities, how people live, how they think about humans, you know. I mean, that's what I liked about that, this show. Plus, you know, the variety, they give you more casts, more variety casts, and of course more of uh, the previous characters reprise their roles, you know, in cameo appearances. Um, they also go into some details of what some of the previous characters did in the galaxy, like Washu and stuff. I'll, I'll show that at the end. Of course, you know, this story doesn't follow Tenchi. It follows a new character called Senya. Um, he's Tenchi's friend, and, uh, dude, I mean, it follows him and other characters throughout the, you know, show, like Amane, Ryoko, and all those characters. I'll go all, all over all the characters. It's a long-ass list. Oh, man, it took me a while to find all these characters and their background. Even some I couldn't find. I mean, okay, we start off with Senya Yamada. Um, Senya Yamada has the worst luck in the fucking galaxy, for sure. Um, you know, growing up in this in his hometown, everyone stays away from him. The only one that hang out with him is Kai and Kim Kiriko. Uh, he, something always goes wrong. Something always happens. He gets hurt. Uh, I'll show you some things about him getting hurt, which is pretty hilarious. Um, you know, he after a while, he accidentally joins the GP because his parents made him do it. His mom and his sister. Um, he wants to explore the galaxy. Um, of course, he's not very brave or strong. I mean, he gets his body enhanced, which you know, I'll say what I'll explain what that is later on. So he becomes stronger and faster, but he. I guess he matures throughout the show a little bit. Um, he still can't decide what to do with the girls, but, you know, whatever. Who a guy can, you know? It's fucking can't live with him, can't live without him, you know? <laughs> Okay, I'm almost there. Nothing's gonna stop me now! <laughs> Kiriko Misaki, um, somehow related to Tenchi, uh, through the family tree, if you looked in my previous, uh, show, I showed the tree, and she's included in there with her brother, um, She's actually a GP officer. We don't know that in the beginning. 
that's you know told later on. <laughs> she's also Jerrion, of course. Uh, damn, dude, she's a train killer, dude. She, in one of those fucking episodes, she slashed motherfuckers up like they weren't fucking nothing. She's like a special ops person or something. Uh, besides that, she's nice, you know. She's known Sena since they were, you know, children. They show some clips in the show when uh, they were kids and she took care of them because she felt like she, he needed her. But then she finds out that she actually was the one that needed him. So, of course, there's stuff in there, like a romance building up. She's one of the, uh, the many fucking romance characters Tenchi, I mean, not Tenchi, Sena has. As you'll see in this clip right now. So then it must be true. You know everything. Well, maybe everything was a bit exaggerated. Well, maybe just a little. <sighs> damn, Amade Kaunok from the Kaunok family. God damn. Damn! So I have to say most of the time when I see her in the show. Uh, she used to be a supermodel, GP officer, just like Kiriko and Sena. Um, she actually appears in episode one, and she's the one that gives Sena the um, fucking, what do you, what you call it, fucking pamphlet, which he signs and joins the GP. Um, she's actually pretty strong as well. Very friendly, but definitely a fucking flirt. Uh, that's for sure. But I mean, it, you know, she's another romance character for Sena. Her family, the Kaunoks, are loaded, but she chose to stay in the GP and not become a fucking another rich girl, which is cool. But in this next clip, you'll see her being a total flirt. <laughs> what happened, Sena? Did you slip? Uh, not exactly. Uh. Then be more careful. Sena, could you come over here? Huh? Uh, and help me for a teensy weensy second. Uh, uh, Sena, please. I desperately need your help. I'm so confused. I seem to have gotten myself all tied up. Uh, uh Ryoko Balta. Um I was confused with her name, but she says later on that she was named after the famous pirate Ryoko, which of course you know who she, that is, right? Um, basically, she's nice, she's beautiful, she's, I mean, very cute for a pirate. <laughs> um, she's famous, actually, well known throughout the GP. Most of the people know her in the GP and are big ass fans of as hers. Uh, she has a character, a spy working for her in the GP called Irma. I'll talk about her later. Um, later on throughout the show, we don't actually see her much in the beginning. Not until like after episode 13 when she pledges her life to Sena because she saved her and her crew's lives. Um, which, okay, there's a big secret. I'm not going to spoil that one. But, uh, I mean, she is one of the main female romances for him. So it was kind of weird not to see her in the show as much. But you'll see when you watch the show what happens. Also, she finds out she's a Bal part of the Balta clan, and it turns out she's a princess, basically. I can't live with myself knowing that I failed my crew and their families. <sighs> Goodbye, Sena. Go back to Earth while you still can. No, don't! Promise you won't forget. <laughs> Ryoko! All right, Sena! Oh. You're not getting away this time! <gasps> Then we introduced Neiju, um, basically like the Sasami of the group, if you want to think about it that way. I mean, that's how I thought about it, because, you know, she also ha turns out to have a secret. She's actually the priestess, high priestess, um, which, you know, okay, in the show they say she's over three millennia old, but from what I've read and found online, she's actually over 2,000 years old. Um... You would think that that's old, but, you know, not as old as Washu and uh, most other people, but whatever. Um, she's very, she's, she looks young, but she's actually old, 
she could actually look older, you know, older physique, I guess you would say. But she's very cute, though, as a young girl. <laughs> what were you thinking? You may only be the body double of the High Priestess, but you're still the custodian of her reputation. <laughs> Let's be frank, girls. Sena is off limits. Excuse me? Don't you think you've taken this farce a little too far? What farce? You better... Uh, you... Uh, I can't have you telling any of this to Sena. So you mean... You're really... Neju! You're not to say a word about this to him until our trip is over. You know who I am, so you're also aware of my power. I have countless means by which to ensure your cooperation, though I'd rather it be consensual. That sounds an awful lot like a threat, High Priestess. Then you've misunderstood our conversation. I don't threaten. I order. Little Fuko, um, she's basically the new ship Washu has made, uh, sister to Ryoki and Ryoko. She also, you know, she's basically a little furry little animal, just like Ryoki. Um, she's a ship as well, but I'm, I'm gonna keep that separate for now. Uh, she's a baby. I mean, she doesn't know combat. She gets scared, so... They try to do a subsystem and stuff, but it doesn't work. Um, she she gets she matures throughout the show, especially you know towards the end. She fucking shoots fucking lasers at people whenever she wants. I mean, crazy. Man, this is my dog right here, MB, man. I would fucking hang out with that fool, smoke his fake little cigarette that he always holds. Okay, he's just an android that was rewritten by Amane to, I don't know, do whatever. He turns into a pervert. He's all into the chicks. I mean, I'm not even going to talk about him because he's just that cool of a dude. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to leave him with these clips so you guys can see, which are some of the best ones, but whatever. Teacher Nature. I wish I had a teacher who would take a bath with me. What was it that thing just said? Your MB, his circuits are fried. If you don't blame yourself. Once they hit puberty, they go nuts. There was nothing you could have done. No. This training for myself. Whatever. I have some excellent footage of Amani and Sena's training. Should you like to view it later? No. Birth. You should have seen Amani this morning. Wearing nothing but an apron, hanging all over that boy. Disgusting. Why do you keep antagonizing me? That's what Amani programmed me to do. I'm only following orders. And All right, so Mitoto's a recurring character from the previous series. You know who she is. I'm not really going to talk to her uh, about her that much. Um, but a lot is shown in this show, though. Um, you know, she's an airhead, yes, but uh, she shows incredible intelligence when it comes to combat. Just like her daughter, Mihoshi. They they play they play this you know dumb act or whatever, but you know I'm pretty sure they're pretty skilled warriors. They just don't like to show that part side of them. I don't know why, but um, you know, that's cool with me. I mean, in this next clip you'll see what I mean. Does this ship have the orbit forecast program version six? That's three versions old. Seven through nine were highly overrated. Six will do just fine. What you propose is extremely dangerous. At this point, what is it? Huh? Prepare a random jump. <gasps> Make circuit three an energy bypass. Simply pump in enough crystal gel to fill it. And we have Sato, another recurring character. You already know what I know about her. She's hot and all that. Um, she has more parts to play in this show than the other ones. Uh, you find out that she's head of the military, which is separate from the GP, but she controls them too. Which makes no sense, but I guess I somehow it does. I really don't know. <laughs> I mean, the G, the military is different. I mean, even they explain that in the show. Uh, and also another recurring character is Irie. Um, she plays more larger part in this one because she's you know head chairman of the GP and Santa reports to her. She's the one that gives him all his missions, especially the ones that involve him being a you know, decoy and grab pirates and nail them, but whatever. And of course, Mikami returns as well. You remember her? She's Mikoshi's great aunt, Mitoto's aunt. And yeah, she's, you know, head of the GP, so she's gonna be there. And she fucking scares the shit out of recruits, too, which is hilarious in some of the 
one of the episodes, I forgot where they graduated. <laughs> and uh, this is the spy I was talking about earlier, uh, Ryoko spy, Irma. Um, she's a race of, I guess, a dog. She, they never See, that's another thing. They never explain the planets and stuff. That's the thing. I'll have to go into that later. But, yeah, she's a spy. She's cool. She lives with Sena and the girls for a while. And, uh, all right, so this is Serio. You remember Serio? He came out in the last episode of the first series. He was supposedly engaged with Amon, uh, not with uh, Yeka, but instead she kicked his ass, and now he hates all humans, and he wants to kill him. I don't know why, but that's this shit. He sucks, but yeah. Too easy. I was hoping for more of a workout, but I guess I should have known better than to expect much from him. Did you kill him? Don't worry, I hit him with the back of the blade. Hmm. Which side's the back? You now begin on your path to glory. Hold your head high. You are now a Deluma. Yep, I'm a badass. Yeah, we come to Kai. Um, he's Tenchi's best friend. He's Jiraiya. He doesn't know it yet. Uh, he has some kind of weird power. He can make something out of nothing. I um, mean, yeah, I put a clip in so you guys can see it. Various parts where he's doing that. Um, I guess at the end he turns. He ends up being uh, ten. Uh, not Tenchi. He's a uh, Sena's. Did I say Tenchi earlier? I mean, my bad. Uh, Sena's sister's boyfriend, uh, which is I guess pretty cool. I mean, she, she'll have a Jiraiya baby. <laughs> All right, now we have this guy. He only comes on like episode one, two, and three, and then at the end, I guess. I didn't, did he catch his name? So I can't even tell you his name. I can't even look it up. I can't even find it. But uh, he seemed like a cool character, even though he didn't come out that much. He even acknowledges that people don't recognize his name at all, or remember his name, as you'll see in this clip I put in, uh, you know, with that. I get that all the time. Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. We come to Sena's fucking family. The fucking dicks. Nah, fucking nah. I mean, they love him. Uh, they care for him. It's just that uh, they're kind of dicks to him, which is funny. I mean, <laughs> I laugh at it. Especially his younger sister and his mom. His dad's just there chilling, drinking. You know? What's what, Evs? Four. Three. Cue music. Was that my cue? Is the tape rolling? It's rolling. You can go now. Dad, Mom, Am I Yoshko, in frame? what's going on? <clears throat> Sena, you're my only son. My firstborn child. I don't know why you did this, but I'm darn proud of you, kid. Hi, Sena. We're turning your room. What is this? Oh, it's video go. mail. We recorded oh, it just go. before launching. Sena. Launching? It's a brave thing you're doing for the family. I didn't want to tell you earlier, but the cost of your oh. frequent injuries and hospital stays were a heavy burden on our finances. We've lost countless customers because of your accident. <laughs> All right, and now uh, Alan, Barry, and Cohen. Um, these guys were in the show a lot, actually, for supporting characters. Yet they didn't feel the need to them for you know be, have more time in the show. Which whatever, they're supporting cast. Um, they're actually pretty cool guys, nerdy as fuck, and also a pervert. Huge fan of Ryoko, definitely, that's for sure. Kamidake. There's never been a ship like her. That's what you always say. Yeah, what's so special about this one? This marks the first time the GP has commissioned a vessel solely as a decoy to lure pirates. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Who did they find crazy enough to play captain, or should I say bait? Probably some old timer hoping to score with the space babes. <laughs> well, they better enjoy it while it lasts. This ride will be scrap in a week. <laughs> <laughs> and to think we volunteered for this assignment. And, of course, we have Kenneth, a uh, supporting cast member, Tenchi's uh, Academy roommate. Didn't have a big part in the show. They actually just tossed him aside, just like the upcoming roommate. I don't know why. They actually seem like pretty cool guys. This is, uh, you know, Racha. I mean, I don't know. They, they seem like they would have a bigger part in the show because they were his roommates. They would have been together in the same shit. But they kind of cut him off. Just like Tenchi's friends. You never see him again. It's like saying his friends. the same fucking... Are all Earthlings like this? Where's your sense of adventure? Interesting. I thought they were just like us. I guess I was wrong. What are we going to do if someone finds out we're gone? Relax. All we have to do is fool the sensors in our room, which is the reason I took the liberty of borrowing your MB. You mean you don't know when the best parties are held? It's the middle of the night. Huh? Party? 
That's why. Exactly, my friend. It's time to pop. And here we have two of uh, Sato's bodyguards. Uh, for, I believe their names. They say their names in the show. I can't really spell it out. I couldn't even find them. They're not even on the tree for some reason. I don't know why. Um, they serve her faithfully. I think their names were Kane Mitsi and Minahu Misaki. And even uh, t uh, Senya catches on the Misaki part of her last name. But, you know, other than that, I don't really know their names. I don't know what to say about them. You know, they were just saying. Uh, this guy's name was Uchu Sumi. Me, ma, me, I think it was Mamiki, if I can say it right. I'm sorry, I'm butchering it. Um, he was given a choice when he met Sato, either to marry him or to die. And if it's, you know, if I was given that choice, I would marry her. Because whenever I get threatened by a woman, I know I love her. <laughs> Fuck you. Who might you be, sir? Oh, how rude of me. My name is Utsusumi Kamiki. I am Lady Sato's husband. You're married to Lady Sato? Yes, indeed. We met at the academy. She gave me a choice, marriage or death. I never choose the easy path. She's been killing me for ten years now. <laughs> oh, sightseeing, are we? Allow me to show you around. So, here we have the Kaunox. Basically, Amane's parents. Rich as hell. They actually own the clothing line of the galaxy. Um, that's basically how they explain it to you in the show. They're that rich because everyone loves their fucking clothes and fashion. And Amane, of course, is a supermodel for them and the company. And they want her back, but, you know, Amane's gonna do what Amane's gonna do, man. I don't know. These four girls are the handmaidens of Sato. Um, they have a secret agenda. I don't really know what it is about, but they end up kidnapping Sena at the end of the show. And then, um, of course, we come into uh, this guy, uh, Ryoko's right-hand lieutenant. I think his name was Wutan. Um, he doesn't appear much in the show. A couple episodes here and there. He would have been a cool character to have. Probably, like, help Sena train, fight or something. But he's just in those episodes, and you never see that fool again. I don't know why. But, um... He's very loyal to Ryoko and always, you know, by her side protecting her. And here we have Miname, the recurring character, which was Mihoshi's grandfather, Mitoto's dad. He seems to change a little bit in the show. He's more honorable than he was in the last show. So that's a good thing, I guess, that uh, clean bathrooms in the entire galaxy really helped him out. And then uh, another recurring character is Mashisu, which, you know, married uh, Misao and is actually in charge of Chobi Maru now. Her hair is longer than you can see in this picture, but I can't really find one. But uh, just picture with longer hair, like almost an afro. <laughs> and then Miss Sal, of course, comes out, and I actually did find a picture comparing his younger self to his newer self. He's actually part of the military and GP. Uh, he actually ends up arresting everyone, but it's cool, it's cool. He, he gives him a cool ass pad, so, it's, you know, I forgive him, I forgive him. And um, here we have Vega. Um, Amane's rival in uh, Supermodel World. She only comes out in one episode, which was, uh, you know, Supermodel for the new GP uniform. Uh, she has big tits, as you can see. And it's fucking Southern accent for some reason. Like, I guess there's a Southern place in the fucking galaxy we don't know about. I guess. But that's where King Fang's from. <laughs> and believe it or not, there's a fucking female version of MB. I didn't really catch her name. Uh, maybe you guys can find it out. Uh, she ends up falling in love with MB. Rapes MB in a good way. But MB is all fucked up and can't do shit as you can see right there. He's all like oh she just blew up. You saw that shit? Fuck. Alright so I wasn't going to go through all of them individually but the entire main cast of fucking Tenchi other you know, two shows comes out. Washu, Sasame, Noike, Ayeka, Ryoko, and Tenchi himself. Of course, they all have grown older. Um, actually, even the grandpa's there. Not the dad or any, uh, Ray, uh, Rhea, whatever. But they come on the end of the show. Um, and she's pregnant with uh, the baby, which is actually the main character for the next show. Watch, I'm going to review. I'm not going to give too much away. Um, but basically, from what I found out in the show... 
it's been two years since he released Ryoko. So he's at least 17 to 18. And he does look, he does sound like that. He looks like that. So, you know, it's all cool. It's all cool. The only, uh, <laughs> my bad. Another reoccurring character is Azusa. He only comes out at the end. He sounds different because, you know, voice actors, whatever. Um, you know, he's there. He's, you find out that the proper translation is Emperor, not King for some reason now. And uh, Funao, Funao is there as well. Because they're talking to Tenchi about the secret robot he found, which I'll go over right now in a little while. Not right now, right now, but in a little while. <laughs> and uh, of course, you know, if she's there, Miss Saki Masaki is there. <laughs> um, you know, she's always wherever they are because she's the second wife of the Jiraiyan Emperor now, I guess. That's what you can refer to him. I don't know why I like King better. I mean, that's my opinion, but whatever. And um, here we actually have someone important, Asuza's mom, Amame. Uh, she's actually not part of the royal family. She's in the GP. She was kicked out of the family when she married her husband, who turned out to be a commoner. And his name was Kazuki. It's just here. He's also part of the GP. They don't specify what ranks they are or how high up they are, but Sena and meets them down in the street. They were with uh, one of Sato's bodyguards there, chilling, you know. All right, and we move to the antagonist, which this show really didn't have any. I'll be honest with you. I mean, this girl Kyo Kachamichi or whatever, Kamachi, my bad. Um, I don't think she's a bad guy, but you know, I had to classify her as one because that's who introduced. And here we have, you know, fucking, you know, Tarot Shank. Uh, he's definitely a bad guy. He wants revenge on Ten uh, on Senya for killing his dad or capturing him in the beginning in the first episode. Um, or second episode, my bad. He has some kind of weird powers, like a robot, robot that follows him around. Uh, he can shoot people. He gets fucked up a lot, as you can see. He goes from a human to a cyborg-looking motherfucker. Uh, I think he dies at the end, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm not sure. You never know. You know, fuckers always come back. Fucking bitches. Huh? Move it! Hurry up! No! No, I can't believe it! Then we have the king of the pirates, or the Luma, that's what he's like to call. He likes to ride his motherfucking giant ship, the Deluma ship. But, um, he's doesn't do shit. He just sits around with those two bitches on him all the fucking time. I mean... I mean, I would do that if I was the king of pirates. Definitely have two bitches next to me all the time, even more. Probably like ten more. <laughs> That's cool. He gets captured and uh, he decides to live his life out in peace after a while, which is all right, you know. That's what I would do if I get captured. Fuck it. I mean, it's like I said, there weren't that many villains, so it, it, but it's still a good show, you know. Uh, here we move on to some of the ships. I'm gonna, you know, talk about the Kamandaki, the first one used uh, by. You know, Sena, when he was first nominated captain, uh, did, gets destroyed in one of the battles, and uh, he replaces the ship with Fuku, which he nominates to be called Kamadaki Point Two, or just Kamadaki again. Uh, the ship is more powerful than the first one, and uh, you know, well, you know, you've seen how Ryoko fights in her ship. That's exactly how they fight in this ship. I mean, it's pretty cool. It can, you know, merge with other trees because it's part of the royal seed family, whatever. So that's pretty cool. And uh, later on, you know, Sena, you know, fucks around, lands on the planet, and he discovers this, a giant robot from the past. Um, to be honest with you, because I've already seen War on Germ Germania, it kind of has a similarity to it. But I'm not, you know, not, that's my next show I'm going to review. And you can decide for yourself. But uh, it's as powerful as it is. It actually has a drying seed, first generation seed, which the only other first generation seed in the galaxy is, uh, what's her name? W fucking, um, Tsunami. So that's fucking rare, but it's bonded with, you know, um, Sena, so he owns it now. And here are some of the villain ships, but I mean, all, the, all of them look the same. All the pirate ships look the same. They got lazy in the artwork. I don't know why... But, oh, look at that little one. He's getting down, too. He, he grabbing that shit. 
But look, yeah, even some of the fucking characters in the world all look alike. Look, I swear to God, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I would do that too, to be honest with you. I don't want to make it that fucking obvious where you'd be like, so this, all the dudes in my class look the same? I mean, are they all twins? I mean, if they give you that, it'd be like, all right. But I, no, they do that even with the pirates, like the ones that board the ship in the show. They all look the same. They all have the same hair color. Even have the same fucking uniform without variations. But whatever. I mean, they could do whatever the fuck they want, I guess. Um, the lore that was given in the show was amazing. Uh, you learned everything about the galaxy, almost. Um, even right here, Washu made that giant hole by experiment that went totally wrong. Which is crazy. And they even explain body enhancement. Eric's method of body enhancement is a process by which nanomachines are implanted into the body to strengthen muscles and improve reflexes and adrenaline output. Endurance, healing ability, and the rate of cellular mitosis are also greatly enhanced. The effects are extraordinary and substantially extend the subject's lifespan. Do you understand? But yeah, so yeah, the law was awesome. Um... I mean, the show, I think that made the show a lot more better for me. Made me a lot more interested in it. Just like, you know, the military separated from the GP, body enhancement, the canyons made by Washu, the heaven tree being the most giant tree in the galaxy. Uh, they have all, everyone's DNA in the galaxy on file so they could find them faster. And, you know, it's just fun. It was awesome. Uh, I mean... In general, I mean, I took some points away because of the art. That kind of pissed me off. But this show definitely gets an 8 out of 10. You know, I mean, it was fun, interesting. I mean, I, I enjoyed watching the music. Wow, dude, that fucking opening song was a shit. Had me dancing and shit. Nah, I'm fucking, I wouldn't dance. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was fun. Uh, not a boring experience at all. I probably before, you know, I mean, I'm not going to give it away, but, um, definitely my favorite of the three so far, definitely, but I, I know what's coming up next, and I'm going to review it, you know, after I watch it again, but it's fucking long, an hour and episode, um, yeah, but like I said, this, the characters were amazing, the new cast, the recurring cast, damn, you know, shit, I, I don't know, they did a good job, I mean, even the lore. Lore was the shit. The shit. Um, the ships were awesome. The space fighting. They could have been a little bit more space fighting. But whatever. Um, but yeah. I mean, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hit that like button if you can. Comment. Uh, you know, I'm always looking for comments. Because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later with my next review. Oh yeah, sorry. Before I go, I'm, a, I'm at the end. I'm going to leave you with a promotional clip. You know, think about joining the GP, because the galaxy fucking needs you right now. Galaxy Police is the interstellar law enforcement agency which protects almost 60% of the entire galaxy. With state-of-the-art firepower, the brave men and women of Galaxy Police hunt down the rule breakers of the universe, keeping neighborhoods safe and property values skyrocketing. Yes, decent taxpayers can rest easy at night, knowing these skilled peacekeepers are defending the values every intelligent society should embrace. Whether by land, sea, or air, Galaxy Police is the first and last name in multi-global security and defense. Recognized worlds over for their contributions to galactic safety, no other branch of law enforcement has been so successful in stomping out crime and looking this good while doing it. Only the most athletic applicants survive the rigorous training necessary to become a GP officer. No matter the crisis, Galaxy Police will be there to help. Magic hand! Do you have what it takes to stand with the very best? If so, Galaxy Police is looking for you. You provide the courage and determination. We'll supply the rest. Call or visit your local GP recruiting office today. No member of the GP or its affiliates was used in the filming of this presentation. Actual results may vary. Void where prohibited.